Hi there, today we'll be discussing digital sensors. We'll discuss four areas. We'll talk about the equipment and the components of a digital sensor. We'll talk about the care maintenance, the preparation, and the technique. So here we have a digital sensor. This is a specific brand, the Dexis brand, and this is the brand that we use at SAIT. We have three components. We have the digital head, or the sensor head, the cable, or what we call a cord, and then the USB connection. This is the connector that goes um, directly into the, the computer. We also have um, what we call here a caddy, or a holder, or garage for our sensor head, and it helps keep our sensor head safe. We also will be using um, a barrier, or also called a sensor sheath. This barrier that we use here is specific to DEXIS. And we have our XTP kits. These XTP kits are, again, specific to the DEXIS brand. They are the ones with the black rings. Okay, so that is the equipment. Um, moving on, we're going to talk about the care maintenance. We want to be very careful when um, using our digital sensors. Okay, they're very fragile, um, and we want to just keep them as safe as possible. If we compromise the integrity of our sensor, again, that'll be, um, you know, we'll not produce quality radiographs, images, which again will affect our patients. So when we're transporting these sensors, we want to hold them with both hands. We want the um, cable, or the um, USB connector and the sensor head in one, and then the rest of the cord in the other. We want to avoid things like just if we held it like this, we could get caught on things and it could get ripped out of our hands. If it were to get ripped out, it can fall to the ground, and if this were to hit the ground, um, our sensor could be compromised. When we store our cable sens or our sensors, we want to have them, um, you want, want, want to avoid any kinks of the cord or the cable. Um, what's recommended is that we have, actually have them hanging in a straight line so the cable cord stays nice and flat and not kinked. Also, um, we want to avoid things like drawers, getting the, them kinked and caught into the drawers. We want to avoid um, touching the ground because then our wheel of our chair can roll over, again compromising the integrity. A rule here at SAID also is if this uh, sensor is not in our hands or in the patient's mouth, it is in the caddy. Again, keeping it safe. When we are placing um, the sensor into the patient's mouth, we really want to avoid the patient biting down on the cable cord. Again, it could kink or impinge on the um, wires. And at any time when we're working with our sensors, we really want to avoid um, pulling on the connections. So the cable is connected into the sensor here at the back. Any type of pressure or pull can um, dislodge uh, the cables and wires. Same thing with the um, USB. When we're placing it into the computer, we want to place it in on the, um, with the base here, not pulling it from the cord. We want to remove it from the base. Uh, so, okay. We wanted to also note that these sensors are obviously reusable. Um, we do not autoclave them. If the sensor were to go into the autoclave, it would be wrecked and ruined forever. Okay, so what we do here, um, if this were to become contaminated, we want to, it's recommended that the cavity wipes are used. So if you were to, um, saliva or any contamination were to um, touch this cord or the sensor head, this is the uh, wipe that you'll use. Here at SAIT, we also have an Optum wipe. Um, for our wipe downs, so we do not want to use the Optum wipe. It's very clear that we want to use our cavity wipe. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about pre um, preparing our sensor. Um, so again, we will have it in the caddy when we get first get into the operatory. We do need to cover um, the sensor head and cord cable with a barrier. So how to do that is quite simple. We open up the end and we drop it into the sensor head into the so it falls all the way down to the base of this barrier. We can wiggle it down and then help guide the rest of the, the barrier covering the, the cord there. 
keeping it nice and flat and snug at the bottom. When the barrier's on it, we can then put it back into the caddy. All right, so again, that'll avoid any cross-contamination and keep our patients safe. Okay, and we do need to consider our control panel. Um, we have settings here A, B, and C for different methods. We have C is what we use for a direct digital method. Um, just a reminder that we can change it to A for traditional and B for our PSP method. So we want to have that ready to go. And lastly, we want to talk about um, when we're prepare, preparing our sensor, the XCP kits. I mentioned earlier that these XCP kits are specific to DEXIS. We, in this kit here, we can perform an radiograph bite wings and anterior and posterior PAs. This kit comes with two rings, black rings, three bite blocks, and two rods. So you'll notice that the first ring here has two ends or tails. That one is specific to PAs. The second ring has only one end or tail, and that's specific to our bite wings. Which end or um, tail here we use depends on what area of the mouth and what um, um, PA we're taking. Okay, so when we're setting this up, we want to, again, if we're, let's say we're doing a posterior, we'll place it in the hole, and then we'll, we will use a ring that applies, or the end that works best. Okay, I want you to note that it's we do want to avoid placing this ring on our XCP kits and having these pointy little triangles facing the patient. It's best that we position it so the flat portion is towards the patient's cheek, as so. Okay, so we can see we can see right through um, to our, where our sensor will sit. Same thing goes for our bite wings. We place it in the hole there, and we place on our ring. Again, we can see right through. Common mistake here with our bite wings is that we will place this bite block like so, and which is incorrect. We want to extend it as so this clip here is on the outside. When we're placing our sensor in to these bite blocks, we use this clip to attach. So we place it in and make sure it's nice and snug and secure in the bite block, as so. And then we always want the cord or cable to be following the metal rod. You can notice when you're doing, using your um, bite wings, the metal rod is the straight rod. So again, we want it to follow. An incorrect positioning would be if this sensor was placed as so, and this rod would be, or sorry, the cable would be on the opposite side of the rod. Again, if we were to be placing in the patient's mouth, the cord would be entering first, which is incorrect. We always want this sensor to be positioned as so, so the cable is following the metal rod, and we're placing it into the patient's mouth sensor first. When we look at our PA setup, we notice that the rod isn't straight like our bite wing, it has a curve like an L shape in it. Again, this will be for our posterior or our anterior. Great. And now let's talk about technique. So here at SAIT we are using our traditional, our PSP, and our direct digital sensors, those methods. Um, when it comes to technique, we use the same technique for all methods. We'll be using um, um, the paralleling technique uh, mostly, but you can use the bisecting technique if necessary. And that is everything. Thanks very much.